All right, so chapter three, part, am I at part three? Chapter three, part four. I'm trying to take notes so I kind of know where I'm at. Um, addicted to monsters. And um, just so you know, uh, pretty quickly, each chapter from here will be disappearing from here and it will be posted on Darling Nikki after I've had a chance to um, work with, um, you know, getting it um, edited and um, putting up an, an AI image and things like that. So here, I'm kind of showing my face and telling my story as I am. Um, and on Darling Nikki, I'm going to try to make it a little bit more anonymous um, before it has a chance to, I would say, be seen and heard by a lot more people. So you get to see it here first, um, as is, and that's that. So um, you can check out uh, Darling Nikki pretty much everywhere, TikTok, YouTube, all that. And that is a space that I'm using to tell primarily my stories because my entire life story is like literally it's a bunch of series in itself, but then also highlighting um, other stories and trying to create a, spa a safe space for women to uh, to come out, to come out from abuse, to come out from um, unhealthy situations and to also know that you are not alone and to be an example. Um, I have every reason to be someone who is... Um, I don't know, in an insane asylum or on the streets, on a bridge. Uh, I mean, shoot, I'm still somewhere just trying to strip to make money. And you know what, if that's your path and if you're happy with it, great. But there's a lot of women who do it because um, they may, they feel like they don't have another choice and they can't do anything respectable. They tried to be and they weren't respect, so-called respected. So they're just like, you know what, forget it. I'm going to take these dudes' money and that's what it is. And I get it. No judgment. I'm just saying that I have so many reasons to be on so many other paths and it's been very difficult for me to get on and stay on the path that I'm on and I want to talk about all the things that got me here um, and all the things that could have that honestly that could have me in the ground right now in the ground or um, going in an or in an opposite direction um, I owe it to myself I owe it to my children and to my future um, and to people who are assigned to hear from me um, to, to tell my story and to say what I'm saying. All of it. So, Addicted to Monsters, Chapter 3, Part 4. Um, this one's pretty much all about Romeo, my first husband. Uh, so, he guessed my birthday on campus, and, I mean, from then on, we were inseparable. Um, I would still see other people because I was very much a young college student. Um, he seemed to be just really stuck on me. Now, what I didn't know at the time is that he had also been stuck on someone else that he had dated before me and it got to the point to where he wanted to get engaged to her and he wanted to propose to her but she dumped him for whatever reason and that really left him um, I think having to prove something so here I come as the rebound that I did not know that I was and he was really trying hard to prove something um, I think with our relationship um, I started to notice uh, that he didn't seem to have much direction he should have been getting ready to graduate, but instead he dropped out to go on some Christian pilgrimage, and it just that didn't really sit right with me. So I started to notice some things that now I know as inadequacies and some some serious uh, personal development um, problems. But at that time, um, I kind of had a feeling, but I didn't really know what it was. But I but I also knew here's somebody who really really loves me. I'm getting great attention. He pays attention. Um, his gifts and things like that are not typical. And so I also needed that attention and that validation and like love. So I kind of put up with it a bit when he moved to Houston and him and his frat brothers went down there to so-called, uh, it was do some street ministry. And I remember him telling me something about some prostitute street ministry that never sat right with me. So when he said that to me, I started thinking, okay, I'm not taking this relationship seriously. Like he, he doing some, he on some foolishness, but I'm still going to, I'm still going to fool with him though. I mean, I'm, I'm still rocking with you, but just not taking it seriously anymore. And I remember I had a cell phone. I think he bought it. And I noticed something that seemed to be obsessive that kind of started to get on my nerves. Like if he would call me and I didn't answer, he would keep calling, 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 calling. So at that point, I'm like, okay, let me just make it clear that we're dating, but we're not like, you know, like relax, relax. And so I started seeing other people, other guys on campus and, you know, uh, letting him go to Houston and do whatever his thing was and thinking, okay, well, you know, we got a good thing here going. We'll keep dating and being together, but I'm also going to keep my options open and just try to just focus on why I'm here. I'm going to try my best to be successful in school. Um, I remember him coming back to visit me several months later for Valentine's Day. 
and uh when he came back to visit me uh i think he was staying on uh, he was staying with, at a friend's apartment on campus and i'm uh, not quite sure what his i don't even know if he really had a plan i didn't even bother to ask him i mean i'm a kid i'm 18 uh and he proposed to me it was the laziest proposal ever it really was but at that time the fact that he did it i was just head over like you could not you, you couldn't tell me anything differently like we were visiting um you know i think we were it was like the middle of the night and he was just like he just kind of rolled over and was like you love me that's right that he said you love me don't you and I said, of course I do. And he was like, will you marry me? Like, literally, it was just like that. And now I'm looking back and I'm like, oh, my God, that was like a child speaking. You love me, don't you? Do you love me, mommy? Um, you know, replaying all this stuff, I think I see it so clear. But as a, as a kid, all I know is, matter of fact, he didn't even say, like, I love you, too. He just said, you know, will you marry me? Because I, I guess I loved him. <laughs> so I was ecstatic. All my college friends all excited and stuff because we're all kids and we're dumb. And um, uh, then from there, everything just moved really, really fast. Um, we found an apartment together off campus. So now I'm living off campus in an apartment. I didn't need to do that. But just the whole idea of being somebody's wife, um, you know, was just everything to me. We got married very quickly. Uh, we got married. At, I was 19 when I married him. So now I'm 19. I'm still a college student. He is not in college. He gets a job working in the mental health field, which was where what he was getting his degree. I convinced him to go back to college and continue to work on his degree. Um, and he did finally, com he did complete it. Um, uh, what else? Um, and now we're getting this apartment and, you know, taking on a, a car debt and everything else. And it was, I, I quickly got very overwhelmed with all of this. You know, oh, and then by this time, now he's actually really a preacher, which was never a part of my plan. So now I'm married to an actual preacher. Um, sometime during the beginning of that marriage, I discovered, uh, I started hearing some rumors about what I think I kind of already knew, but I kind of gaslit myself into thinking that it wasn't that. But the whole so-called, you know, ministry in Houston with some street ministry and then them reaching out to prostitutes yeah and then I think he had said he had mentioned about one of the girls that that they were letting her stay with him and stuff and I'm thinking this is dude it kind of grossed me out but I still you know I still rocks with him but uh he wound up going to uh you could put two and two together what all that foolishness was it was just a bunch of foolishness um so it's it's about to get into a serious part so i'm gonna go ahead and stop it here and then just so i can take my time with this next part which was pretty much the, the whole defining of our our marriage um and why it really it would not be able to succeed and last <laughs> 